So I, I just, um, for those of you who still haven't uh, successfully registered for your team via the last Friday's participation program, um, the, the link, because I'm using a program called NG Rock um, for the account that I have, which is a free account. I can only, I have to update the link from time to time. Maybe I should purchase a more permanent link so I can uh, we, you don't need to follow the link. But anyway, the link I just set up for today is a post on the announcement. Um, just just remind you that this link is not for you to open it with your browser. This link is only work for, um, um, what do I call, um, the, the JSON RPC uh, communication. You can use this link to do that. Um, JSON RPC, by the way, is a lightweight web protocol to allow you essentially using um, the, the way that your browser communicate with the server, but allow any two program, such as um, the program that we showed you last week. Um, it's, it's very, very handy, very useful for doing any kind of uh, modern application today. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I just want to make sure um, by the end of this week, everybody in this class know what's going on regarding the the um, the how to install JSON RPC. How to actually see a very simple communication protocol works uh, in the context of uh, actual oriented programming. Um, and what I'm going to do is that, um, so by the way, this this week, I still have office hour. So with office hour, please uh, ask me all the questions if you have. Um, tomorrow, just to let you know, make an announcement. Tomorrow's office hour will probably be likely uh, online as I will be uh, out of campus. So I will use a Zoom to have uh, office hour for tomorrow only. Um, the other thing is for today, I'm going to first talk about homework three, which the, um, the program I show, uh, I tried to show last Friday, but I'm, we ran out of time. So I'm going to do that. And then I will move into chapter 13 and 14, which is uh, inheritance and polymorphism. We're going to treat those two topics uh, together. And after chapter 13 and 14, which is hopefully later this week, um, then we will go into the midterm because I said after this four chapter, we're going to talk about the midterm. Okay, so let's look at the code. I hope you actually get the code. Uh, this is the code. Let me actually bring the GitHub. If you have an inks, uh, download it. If you haven't downloaded, hold on, where is my, where's my stuff? No, not this one. Yes, this this piece of code, this link, um, I posted last week, I think, I hope you still have it, is, um, uh, github.com slash s felix Wu slash uh, person dash n dash thing dash homework three dash reference. Okay, that's the code I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to talk about two things. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is what do I mean by reference? Because the main objective of the of the homework is for you to create a bunch of classes represent the scenario we're dealing with. So this is really a toy example. Essentially, in real world, you have a much more complicated scenario, and you need to 
design a few classes and represent that scenario you want to manage. And, and the thing is that typically in the in the um in the scenario we're dealing with in real world is not just representing the objects or their interaction, but also we want to represent what happened at what time. If you think about all the real world application, typically it's not just about like a people thing or whatever building, whatever activity, but the important thing is what kind of events that's happened in this world we're representing in the object oriented language. So you can see that this homework is very simple, but it's actually challenging because it represents a few concepts that we will need to deal with when we deal with a much larger um, uh, complex system. So just keep in mind, there are two things. One is, how do I represent the system? And how do I represent the event that happened over time with the system? With this two together, I can actually manage both the static and dynamic perspective about the problem we try to deal with. I mean, I call it a record, but you can call it event or, or some kind of other things which you feel more appropriate. So that's the first thing I'm going to talk about today with this program. But the second thing I like to talk about this program is a concept that I mentioned called uh, thumb to JSON. So, so I, I'm going to tell you what is done to JSON and how to actually implement in some of the scenario in this program. So this hopefully uh, help you to start to understand why it is. And then I will, after you're familiar with the code dump to JSON, I'm going to explain to you why it's important to have this program for dump to JSON a bit later. But, but first, let's look at the modeling part. So you can see in this directory, hopefully you, you have downloaded. If you didn't download it, that's okay. You can actually do it later. You can see that I have a, a bunch of program, but just to let you know, I have four important classes, as I mentioned. Number one is person. Number two is the thing. Okay, person and thing, we're gonna talk about that. And then we have uh, JV time which is represent the time. And then we have a GPS. Those four things were already talked about in the previous uh, demo or instruction uh, demo. Um, essentially, this four represent together help us to be able to model a lot of interesting scenario in real life. The new class I actually introduced is called record. A new class called record. So the record, as I mentioned, is trying to capture what's going on, the event about the system I try to model. Okay, so I have all this five different classes. And so let me actually first show you a bit of code and about each of the class and make sure that um, you're, you're kind of okay with each individual class. Then we move to record. So the first thing is let's look at GPS. This is probably the most familiar one. And you can see that this is the code that we have um, before, but just want to tell you that this is a convention. I actually add uh, a new in cool file called ECF36B comma. So this file essentially include all the most commonly uh, needed in cool file. It means that for example, you want to include, uh, JSON, you want to include uh, all kinds of string, all kinds of standard C++ library. I mean, just tell you that it's a good habit for you to develop any project to have a uh, for project base or course base, this kind of include file. So what, what you need to do is every time you want to develop a new project, instead of worry what need to be include, what not to into, need to be include, I just directly include uh, a common uh, in Let me just show you why it is. So you can see that over here, I have a bunch of programs. For example, all of this are the standard library strings, IO strings, standard IO, IO 
map and uh, all the standard library with supply, with SPDIO exception and everything. Okay, it's pretty common. And then I actually include a bunch of things which I know every everybody wants to do any programming with JSON, you need to include this four line. And then because I sometimes need to deal with some legacy code, this is what we call ARPANET. ARPANET is the first generation of internet, the internet protocols. And then I include a bunch of things. And the only thing I include, which is not a standard, is what we call ECF36B exception.h. And, and then I have a few utility function, which I haven't shown you, but that's okay. Even though I find this as a definition declaration, I don't have the implementation and you don't need to use it. Compiler will be okay with that. This program later when homework four and homework five, this will be useful for you to actually include those. Okay. So that's basically, you can see that is a, um, a place that I actually include all the commonly used uh, include facility and then just put into one file. Okay, now let's actually look at the GPS uh, .h. So GPS .h is essentially the same as I showed you earlier. I add that one. And then the first few line is probably exactly the same um, constructor. And then we have get longitude, get longitude distance function is already included. But then the only thing I added is this dump to JSON. Uh, that's required for homework assignment number three. You need to implement that. But for um, GPS.h, I actually provide the implementation for you, for you to look at how to implement that. So let me uh, um, let me actually show you this without showing you the dump to JSON part, okay? Just the program looks like this. And let's look at another file, which is JVTI. So with JVTI, I basically provide, and both JVTI and the GPS.h, uh, I provide you the complete CPP file. So you actually only look at this as a reference. By the way, you don't have to follow this. This is just a reference implementation for you to actually consider, and you can actually decide how you're going to construct your own class, okay? And as you can see that there was not too many lines of code. Uh, by the way, I actually make a mistake because this few line, I actually should be able to remove it because it's already included in ECS uh, uh, 36B common, okay? And you can see that this is the same thing as I showed you earlier, but the only thing I add is this uh, dump to JSON. I actually have that dump to JSON for both class and the future class I'm going to show you. All the classes have this dump to JSON, okay? All right, now let's look at uh, person.h. So person.h is also the same, except, oh, I didn't have that dump to JSON. I still have the old one because I didn't provide you. So just tell you what you need to do here. But I didn't, I didn't, uh, I, I th this code will not compile because I don't want to give you the solution, but, Suppose wait a minute. You should actually in your solution, you should have something looks like this. Okay, so this line, instead of this line, your code should have JSON column, column value, dump to JSON. So let me tell you the difference between dump and dump to JSON. So dump is just a uh, printout. If you look at the dump, uh, go to, let's go to person dot, dot CPP. If you look at the dump program, the dump program is just doing a lot of standard output. It's just print out certain things as we show on the top window. But dump to JSON is essentially 
dumping the content of an object into a JSON format. That's why it's called dump to JSON. That's why this function return a JSON object. So instead of print to the printer or, or your, your terminal, it will actually save it as a JSON uh, object. JSON itself is an object, but it's just a different representation. And then that is actually the, the idea. So I'm going to comment this line out because if I leave it like that, this won't compile because I didn't give you the complete solution code. Okay, so that's let's look at the thing as well. The thing is everything is the same, except this one is actually void dump. Uh, forget about virtual, okay? I will talk about virtual when I talk about inheritance. Uh, the, the same thing, this line need to be, oh, wait a minute, what happened? Okay, interesting. Okay, so um, that that need to be changed as well. Okay, okay. having show you all this floor, and now I'm gonna show you the record. What is a record? I'm giving you a very simple way of representing a record. So one of the ideas, so I'm actually simplified. This is not a final solution. But this is the one way to represent the record. And you can see that in the record, what I did is I include all this four because I'm actually going to represent the event happen in this four different classes of objects. Person, thing, GPS, and JD time. That's why I have to include all of them. And I include ECF36B comment because that's actually very handy for me to use. And this record is only represent one person, one thing, one time stand, and one GPS location. Obviously, that's actually not going to uh, um, represent the homework three. Homework three, for example, in some cases, you actually have a three person and you have uh, maybe multiple things you need to worry about. But I'm just showing you an example about how do I represent one person, <laughs> one thing, one GPS location, and one time. And then for you to decide how you're going to extend from here. That's completely your choice, okay? Uh, you can do that. So, so think about what I'm doing. I private, I have, I define a, a attribute, a member called person, which I call a who, and thing what where and when, okay? I'm just having this four uh, member over here. And then I have a record that's actually allowed me to basically uh, set up the, the, the uh, constructor. Uh, I have, again, I have a two constructor. And then I uh, set up four member function to set the person, set the thing, uh, set the GPS set to that. And then I basically say dump to JSON at the end. Okay, so you can see that this is actually a very simplified version of what needs to be done in homework three. That's actually have only one person, one thing, one GPS location and one JB time. Okay, all right. So now uh, with this, let's actually, sorry. Let's look at GP, let's look at record.cpp. Okay, in record.cpp, obviously this is constructor. And set who is very easy. Set who just setting the this to the who set to whatever um, whatever object you provide. You're going to set the object that way. It's basically a copy um, um, of the value. And then you can do set what, you can do set where. And then I'm actually doing the, the JSON. Okay, I'm going to explain dump to JSON a little bit later. That's going to be uh, something which is uh, new to you. So I want to go slower on that. But let's actually just done this. And now I'm going to run the program. Okay, you can neglect the warning because uh, I probably should actually change that. I use a, um, a, a function called sprint app in one of the legacy code. And, and this is related to JV time. I use that, probably should fix that. But the compiler gave you a warning. So, uh, for for this this course, if you got this kind of warning, don't worry about that. Most cases is okay. If you have any concern about some of the warning, uh, please bring it to your friend or bring it to me or the TA. We can probably clarify why that warning is there. I mean, I probably should be able to uh, fix this warning 
to get rid of this depreciated. Uh, um, um, uh, okay, so I run this program, and then this program is from the make file, and then I'm actually going to to run this program dot slash test. Okay, so you can see that is the program is actually running. I'm going to show you what is the what is the test program. Maybe let's. Oh, I don't want to do this. What I want to do is show you this window and then show you the program as a run dot test. Okay, so let's actually look at this. This is how this got produced. And let's actually look at the program. So this is just a simple program to actually test the, the um, all this object. And you can see the first two things we did. I mean, this is uh, um, the same, almost the same program. I add a few lines at the end. So I create a GPS uh, object called uh, Home Woodland. And I create another GPS object called TLC UC Davis. And I create a person called Felix. I create another GPS called IKEA Sacramento. And I, again, create the Swedish Mibble as a thing. Okay, I create a bunch of things. And I set location for Felix to be TLC UC Davis. And then what I did is I do a Felix dump and Swedish Mibble dump. Those are the just print out something to the monitor. I haven't used record yet, okay? But I just want to tell you the result of those, the person dump is dump this part. That's a printout. It dumped the Felix and uh, his social security number, that's why it does. And then it will dump the thing, which is the Swedish Mibble. Uh, so over here, let me just do a little bit. Okay, this part is the dump by the thing. Okay, so far, this is just exactly the same as the previous program we went over uh, in maybe last week, I forgot. Okay, now this is a new thing. Now I start to, um, okay, you can, let's actually skip this three line. This three line, because it's related dump to JSON, I will explain to you a little bit later. But I want to look at the record. Look at what I did in the record part. The record part, I just basically create a record called R1. And I use bracket initialization because the constructor takes a person object, a thing object, a GPS location, and a time. Okay, I use, I mean, this, this part, by the way, getting out JV time, is the part which I actually have a screen nap. Okay, you don't need to worry about this. I already provide to you. Um, you, If you want to develop your own time routine, that's fine. I'm just giving you one way to create a nicely printed or, or JSON format time. Let me just show you a little bit about jvtime.cpp. So this is a program I have. In this program, I have a bunch of routine. Get now JV time. And over here, I actually check a lot of things, make sure the time is okay. And over here somewhere, I think I have a S printf. Yeah, here is S printf. In one of the routine, get time string routine, I use S printf. That was the line I developed a few years ago. And I should have should be able to change it such that I don't have to use this depreciated. So that's it was exactly the reason why we have that issue. Okay. So the JV time routine was provided to you if you want to kind of just use some somebody already developed the solution and just use that. But if you want to develop something um, that you like to experiment, feel free to do that. Okay. All right. Let's actually go back to this line. So this line over here, I create this record with only one person, one thing, uh, one GPS. I mean, just for example, if I actually need to create a record which has multiple person, what should I do? How do I extend from this line to cover something which is more general? What's your thought? Anybody? Yeah. 
we can use a vector array, right? Okay, but but I haven't actually taught you how to do array in, in C++. In C++, there's a template called vector. Um, so you can, if you already know how to use a vector, please go ahead to create a bunch of uh, array to represent things. But for this homework assignment, it's perfectly okay for you to, because the worst case, okay, the worst case in this homework assignment, there are only three person. So you can say who one, who two, who three. And it's, it's fine. In programming, we don't have to do it perfectly uh, the first time. When we do uh, prototyping, we want to just demonstrate the concept that will work for three person. If I don't know how to do vector, don't panic. I just say who one, who two, who three. And then my constructor can actually also take more arguments. If you have more thing, you can say thing one, thing two, thing three, or GPS one, GPS two, GPS three. Whatever you want to do, that's perfectly your freedom. I want you to feel whatever you know, however you want to do it is certainly acceptable, okay? So that, that's the spirit of, of, of programming. Okay, so hopefully this actually tell you what do I mean by record? A record is trying to put a bunch of objects together with some kind of timestamp or the location for us to represent, to know what's going on, okay? By the way, can you give me a real life example that this actually record, it was one person, one thing, one timestamp and one GPS location. That's actually very, very useful, any kind of, real world scenario. By the way, you're using that service all the time. Anybody want to give a guess about what? Yes. Um, yeah. Track action, one person, right? Track your, your, your own, how many steps, right? You walk, how about you? IP address. IP address. That's a good, I, I like that. It's not immediately the answer I have in mind, but in that case, I need to actually include another field for IP address, right? This is actually the, the Google map. You think about Google map when I'm driving, when I'm actually Google trying to track where I am, it's essentially one person, the thing is your phone and then, uh, or your account. And then you have your uh, GPS location and every time. So you can actually, that's essentially a lot of this kind of service they are tracking our location. Okay, it's very common, even just one thing, one person, that's great. But it will be more interesting to track like a multiple person. For example, if you, I can develop a vacation, uh, what's your name? John. John, yeah. okay. Assuming John and I want to meet somewhere in Sacramento downtown. Okay, John, yeah. can I meet with you tomorrow, Sacramento downtown or San Francisco? Would that be okay? Yeah. Okay, good. So the thing is that we didn't set the location about where John and I will be going, but I want to develop a vacation which will track both of us and our location and our phone and see how close we are. And then basically the vacation will direct us to move toward each other. So, so instead of us to actually see, oh, where's John? I'm gonna walk there. The application could potentially track both location at the same time and see which direction they should readily go with each other. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to San Francisco tomorrow. Okay, so don't go there. Come to my office hour on Zoom, okay? All right. So that, that's good, that's the record. But then you can see that, how do I know my record is correct? I mean, once you do the record, you say, okay, fine, uh, Felix, my code is perfect. Okay, you, just, you should trust me that this is an object. If I give you a code, I say, hey, trust Felix code, and, and do you, you, you'll probably say, hey, I, how do I, how am I sure about that? So what do I do? I need to actually look at the content of the object. I need to look at the content of the object R1 to see what it, it, it is. So you can see that I'm actually doing the R1 dot dump JSON. So remember I told you what's dump to JSON. Dump to JSON is convert the complete 
uh, information within an object, and then I represent using the, the JSON format. And then I can look at the output and decide whether the object itself is actually valid, is actually as I expected. Okay, so that is a, that is what we want to do. So now I'm shifting to dump to JSON. I want to tell you how to do that. Before I move to that direction, any question regarding record, the class record? Okay, the more questions you have to let me know. We have to go over this. Let me just control X, control C. Yes, I'm going to kill this. I'm actually going to first to I'm going to gps.cpp. Okay, inside the gps.cpp, I already provide you the program dump to JSON. It's already there. Okay, this is the way I actually set it up. So, this might be the first time, uh, uh, last week I actually explained what JSON is. It's basically key value pair. You can find using curly bracket or using bracket to represent whether it's an array or is an object or it's a basic type. Okay, so if you're not sure what I'm talking about right now, after the class, review the lecture last Friday. Okay, so um, over here, we're going to do programming based on that understanding about what is JavaScript object notation. Let's actually see how we can do programming in C++ to deal with JSON. So the way it does is that, oh, okay, by the way, if you look at the gps.h, it already include ECF36B underscore common dot H and ECF36A common dot H is actually already include this four JSON include file. So essentially this four JSON include file are important for you to be able to start writing program about JSON. Okay, so that's that's just want you to know that. Um, in order, oh, by the way, in order to compile that code correctly, that um, many of you encounter this issue for homework assignment number zero. So just remember, if you encounter error like uh, it couldn't found, like a fatal error, uh, JSON slash JSON dot H not found, that means it cannot handle the first line over here. So usually is minus capital I, you should include this in your make file. Look at my make file the, in the same directory about how I handle that uh, for Mac. It's probably opt slash uh, homebrew slash include. This line will be enough because it actually was there. For um, WSL, is likely to be USR slash uh, include slash JSON CPP, something like that. Okay, so different environment. This is kind of uh, tricky for uh, programming, uh, especially in C++, Unix environment, you always have to provide guidance to the compiler about where to find certain resources for the compiler to be able to catch the information correctly. Yes, please. I read the JSON.h header file. I think it already includes reader.h, value.h, writer.h. What? Um, I implemented, so like I ran this bug without, like I only needed the first thing with JSON that it, it includes the other three. Okay, okay, that, that's good. That, that's that's probably, uh, you're probably right. I, 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 I must have to include this four line long time ago. It actually uh, never, never changed. I never checked, bothered to check. Yeah, so it could be, you're, you could be absolutely right that you just need to include first line and then the rest will be automatically included. Yeah, the, I, I want to say that it's in the compiler, it's in general okay to include the same include file twice. It's okay as long as you have this guarded command. See, all the file I have is this guarded command. I don't know if you noticed, uh, this is the first time I actually talk about it. Have you actually noticed that for every single include file, the first two line is always 
if not define, and then I said define, and then at the end, at the end I said and if. So this and if is oh why I have this y here? It must be a long time ago. I forgot to remove it. So this and if is actually corresponding to the first line if not defined. So this is a very common way to protect us not to include the same thing twice. So so as I mentioned, I could include JSON, JSON, H 20 times. But only the first time when I include, it says if not defined, means that the string underscore ECF36B comma underscore H underscore has not been defined. Only have not been defined, it will actually enter this line. And then once it passes this line, immediately it actually define that. After I define that, the second time I actually go to the same file, ECF36B underscore common H, I won't be able to pass this line. Because why? Because that particular string has been defined. This is a very common practice for both C++ and C programming that I want to make sure that all, every single include file, when you do compiling, not linking, okay? Compiling only got include once, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so that's why you will see I, I do this, uh, if not define, and then define immediately the same thing. That's because I want to make sure only the first time got included, okay? Very practical, be careful. Okay, so now I can actually go into this dump to JSON. Can I make it a little bit bigger? <clears throat> Okay, so this file is called, um, go up one line. This file, you can see that this member function, gpsdd, column, column, dump to JSON. That's a file I'm going to talk about. I'm using this as a first example. I will give you a few examples. You can see that uh, the how to write more complicated dump to JSON. So, Dump to JSON will return an object and the type of the object or the class of the object is JSON column column value. Okay, this is a, one of the most commonly used data structure in JSON programming. If you're doing JSON programming in C++ or any language, um, you will be a good friend with JSON column column value. Okay, so inside here, the first line I did is I actually create this object. Uh, so JSON, column, column, value represent a class. And then the object is called result because I'm going to put this result, return to whoever called this dump to JSON. Okay, what I did is that in the constructor of GPS, if the GPS is never set, is actually going to be 0 0.0, 0 0.0, 0. That's why I'm actually doing this, is that I check whether this value has been set. If the value is not being set, I'm not going to report. But the value has been set, then essentially what I did, okay, this is a line. In fact, this probably, you know, this line, you probably can do a lot of JSON programming already. Take a look at this line. What is the result? Result is a JSON value. It's a JSON object. And what is a JSON? JSON is essentially key value pair. So the way I do it is we actually overload the operator bracket and let us to encode it, the, um, the key value pair. And what I did is here is that I actually have the key inside the bracket. So essentially this line says that Okay, this result, JSON object, one of the key value pair, the key is going to be latitude as a string. And then the value is going to be this to the latitude. So the key is a string and the value is what? It's a double, it's a floating point. So this actually will produce, let me actually tell you, assuming 
let's assuming that this this value, uh, sorry, latitude, P I T U D E. This is a common. This is not a code. Assuming the latitude is thirty six point five. Okay, and then the JSON, if it's a fresh, I'm actually going to create the first key value pair, and then with six. 36.5, something like that. Okay, just to let you know that this line essentially allow me to create a key value pair in JSON format looks like this. Okay, so that's that's lot to you. Any question? All right, so I'm going to do the same thing for, for longitude. <clears throat> So you can see that the style is exactly the same. I basically use a uh, result and using a uh, bracket overloading and with the key value pair. And then I basically just say longitude. So assuming longitude is say 135, 100 minus 136.5. And this essentially create, ah, I make a mistake. This basically after this, I actually have a two key value pair. The first key value pair is still there, is a latitude. The second key value pair is longitude. And then colon minus 136.5, okay? So why is this? Because the first result is actually giving the first key and the value, and it actually added to whatever already in the in the JSON object because I'm using the same result. So then when I'm added to that, the second line, I'm actually adding the second key value pair while the first key value pair is still there. So essentially, as a result, if you look at this, this is actually a very nice way of representing the content of this particular GPS object. It not only provides two value, it actually provides what's the attribute name. So this by itself is self-contained, representing the object. So in some sense, I give you a C plus like object, or I give you this. This should be give you essentially exactly the same <laughs> equivalent and then readable information, okay? Uh, forget about the debugging part. The debugging part, I will, I, will, I will talk about that a little bit later. And the rest of the function is very simple. I just return the result. Just return the object and then I'm done. So dump to object is essentially, I encode all the attribute I have with this object into this into this JSON object called result. And then I just return the result. That's it, called dump to object. Okay, now let's look at more complicated information, uh, more complicated uh, class. Uh, let's take a, look, take, take a look at JB time as well, because I include both uh, this. Very quickly, as I have only very few minutes. Okay. Inside here, you can see it's a little bit complicated, but what I did is I call this function called get time string. And this get time string is giving me a string about the time because inside the JV time, I actually using the year, month, day, uh, hour, minute, second. But I want to actually print out, uh, nicely print out the time string. So I have this function called get time string. And then I basically say, again, you can see that I said result time of this string pointer. So essentially I create another key value pair, but the key is time and the value is a string. It's a type of string for me to actually represent. By the way, time is not a basic type of JSON. Okay, JSON basic type is string, number, double, uh, integer, double, and a bunch of other things. Um, so it's your choice about how to represent a time. You can represent string or you can represent an integer. I mean, one way to represent integer is counting 
uh, number of seconds since 1970, uh, January 1st at 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, that's just uh, representation. Okay, once we know this, now I want you to see what's going on with our program earlier. Let's look at this program. I'm almost done. So I said, okay, look at this. I create a JSON value X. And then now I, I, I call this function. This is called GPS. IKEA Sacramento is a GPS object. And then I can just call dump to JSON. And then I said, look at this. I said, well, I, I'm, I want to print out what is X. What is X? It's a JSON value. How do I actually print it out? I use this function called X dot to style string. And this will produce a nice format. Let's actually look at the program and see how it works. Okay, look at this part. This is the function I just print out correspond to this one. You can see that now it actually to style string means that it will print it not as a a, a continuous line. Instead, they actually break it down into this, but all of them is actually key value pair. Looks like this. Okay, fine. Let's actually look at the, the second one, which is more interesting. It's actually R1 dump to JSON record. So let me actually show you how that works. So I want to finish this and then we're done. So in the dump to JSON, over here, you can see that I actually, because I only have a where and when, the who and what, I didn't implement, so I didn't include, but I give you two out of four, how do I actually do dump and JSON recursively? So this is a dump to JSON I apply to record, but I want to actually dump the where and when. What is where? Where is the GPS? And what is when? When is a JB time? So when I do this, in fact, this might be simpler than you thought, because when I want to create the key value pair, the first is the key is going to be where. And what's the value? The value is going to be a GPS location. And that GPS location, I already have a way to do JSON encoding. It's this to the where, and then dump, dump to JSON. Why is where? Where is GPS? Dump to JSON is GPS version of the dump to JSON. And similarly, this is the time. Let's look at the result, how it looks like. Can look at the last part, you see that? Uh, let's look at where. Where is a key? What is the value? The value is a JSON object. JSON object represent GPS. And inside here, the representation is exactly was produced by the GPS class. Okay, by the way, this is just two level depths. So it means that I have a record, which is including uh, GPS, but potentially you have lots of depths. This object include another object, include another object. But the thing is that the beautiful thing about dump to JSON is as long as you have this dump to JSON, you provide to every single class in your design. Then essentially to dump the whole thing is just a recursive call of the same function. And then the JSON framework will actually nicely concatenate them together and you can actually examine the whole object, okay? So I'm going to stop here and uh, any question? Okay, see you on Wednesday or tomorrow. <laughs>